uh, on the third day. I believe that we will all get value for time and have an exciting conversation as we interact and of course prefer solution that would help the manufacturing sector. Uh, very quickly, I'd like to drop some ground rules that would guide us during this engagement. But first, you need to know my name. My name is Omotayo Keome, and I'm the Master of Ceremony for this event. I also double as the Public Relations Executive of this great association. And it's my great pleasure to be standing right in front of you to moderate the session today. Uh, for our engagement today, I'd like us to kindly put our phones on silence or in vibration mode so as not to disrupt the flow of the meeting. Uh, also, for those who are new to this venue, we have the convenience just by the exit in front. We have the gents on the right and the ladies on the left. This hall has two exits, one exit right in front and the other at the extreme end so that we could muster to the exit point in case of any emergency which we do not pray for. So moving on, I'd like to acknowledge our key invited guests. We'll give them an applause as I mention their name after which we go on straight to the event. Uh, we assure you that we'll keep strict to time as we have quite a lot packed for you to give you value for time and of course something to take home as we move on. First, I'd like to acknowledge the host of this event and the host is no other person than the president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Please put your hands together for Otumba Francis Meshoye. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Also, we are expecting our uh, distinguished guest of honor. I believe when he comes, we would recognize him. He's expected to represent the president of the country. I uh, believe will join us any moment from now. Also, I have the great honor of acknowledging the former president of this association. He served the association meritoriously, and we're pleased to welcome Chief Kola Jamodu. Please, a round of applause for Chief Kola Jamodu. Thank you so much, sir. Also, a one-time president of this association is here with us. A round of applause for Ambassador Asan Adamo Wakili Adama. Please, a round of applause for him. Thank you, sir. In our midst, we have the representative of the governor of Lagos State. She doubles as the Honorable Commissioner for Commerce, Cooperatives, Trade and Investment. Please, a round of applause for Mrs. Folashade Ambrose Medebem. A round of applause for her. Thank you. In our midst, we also have the immediate past Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, is the friend of the house, and we're always excited to see him. A round of applause for Otsumba Ni Adebayo. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. And it's a season of ministers. Our distinguished guest speaker at this event is a former minister of finance, former minister of industry, trade, and investment. Please put your hands together for Olushegun Aganga, C-O-N. A round of applause for him. Thank you so much. I tell you, you are in for an exciting time when he starts to deliver his lecture. Also, we have the honor of the representative from UNIDO as the National Program Officer. Please put your hands together for Mr. Osu Otu. Osu Otu, thank you for joining us. And we also have the honor of the Director General of the National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies, Kuru, Nigeria, Professor Ayo Omotayo. A round of applause for him. Then we equally have the ambassador of Côte d'Ivoire, His Excellency Khalilo Traore. A round of applause for him. Thank you so much. We also have all the dignitaries we're expecting as they come in. I'll do well to acknowledge them. But of course, we can't go on without acknowledging someone who has worked tirelessly with the Secretariat to put this event together and so that everything is seamless. Please put your hands together for the Director General, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kadri, MNI. Thank you so much. Having done that, I'd like us to kindly be on our feet as we take the national anthem to start.
your seats. God bless Nigeria. God bless the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. The president of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, the um, representative from government present, uh, minister present, uh, the distinguished guest of honor, the speaker present, members of the executive and national council of the association, member companies, manufacturing CEOs, and managing director, welcome. Um, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to once again welcome you to this beautiful event. It's the third Ade Ola Odutoda lecture, and we are very, very glad to have you in our midst. Just so that you could warm up to the person seated close to you, could you look at the person to your right and to your left with a broad smile and tell the person, welcome. It's an honor seated close to you. And we are in for a wonderful time. I hope we're doing that. Could you look at the person to your right? If the person beside you is not smiling, is a suspect, please could you do that? All right, thank you so much. We do not get an opportunity to gather like this all the time. So when we have the opportunity to, it's always good to take advantage of acknowledging the person seated close to us. Uh, we're supposed to have the welcome address of the president, uh, but I'm told that uh, the president is supposed to say one or two things to uh, direct uh, which would be delivered to the president, and the representative of the president is not here. And so we do not want to waste time, so we'll just move on to the next item for now, hoping that he will join us before we eventually have to call the president to give his welcome address, which we're holding on for now. So we'll move on to the goodwill messages, and hopefully when that is done, we believe the representative will join us. So to deliver a goodwill message to us at this very important event, I'd like us to put our hands together for the representative of the Governor of Lagos State, Honorable Commissioner for Commerce, Cooperative Trade and Investment, Mrs. Folashade Ambrose Medebem. A round of applause for her. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Just uh, a moment as I wait for the uh, protocol. Okay, I'd like to stand on the existing protocol. It is a great honor and privilege to be invited to join invited guests at the 51st Annual General Meeting of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, which is also featuring the third Ad Odutola Lecture and the Presidential Luncheon. I want to extend my warmest greetings to our amiable President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR. I also felicitate with the President of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Otumba Francis Meshioye, and the entire members of the association. The theme of this, general, of this annual general meeting, setting the agenda for competitive manufacturing under the after what Nigeria needs to do resonates deeply with the economic aspirations not only of our nation but also of our continent. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement presents a historical opportunity for us to harness the collective potential of African nations and propel the, cont the continent to new heights of competitiveness on the global stage. In order for us to take full advantage of the opportunity presented by the AFTA, we must address the challenges that have beset our nation. And bear in mind, and bear in mind that this also brings us to the topic of the wealth of experience and new perspectives that will be of immense benefit to us as policymakers and other stakeholders in the manufacturing and service sector of the economy. 
Our administration in Lagos State recognizes the strategic position of recognizes the strategic position Lagos State occupies and the role we must all play for our country to leverage on the opportunities presented by AFTA. This is why we have continued to prioritize the critical infrastructure and the implementation of policies and strategies aimed at improving the ease of doing business and strengthening the productive capacity of MSMEs across all sectors. We are delighted in Lagos State that this investment is yielding the desired dividends as Lagos State continues to be the preferred destination for both local and foreign direct investment. We will continue to forge excellent relationships with the organized private sector together to ensure that we develop those critical solutions, solving and making sure that we are militating against the growth and fully harnessing the potentials in the real sector. In conclusion, I would like to join the President and the members of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, in paying a glowing tribute to the pioneer president of MAN, Otumba Adeola Odutola, whose legacy continues to inspire generations of entrepreneurs and leaders in Nigeria. I really want to thank him for his vision and dedication to the growth of the manufacturing sector, which has continued to remain an enduring beacon. I would also like to thank you all for listening and wish you a successful 51st annual general meeting. And this has been delivered on behalf, as, as myself, for Mr. Babajide Ulushola Songwolu, the governor of Lagos State. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Please, a better round of applause for her, representing the governor of Lagos State. Thank you so much. And while she was speaking, we heard the excellency step in, representing the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is the ES CEO Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. Please, a round of applause for Dr. Rabiu Oluwo. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. And so we could switch back to the order of the events where we get to do the welcome address. And then we go back to the goodwill message. So to give the welcome address at this event, please put your hands together for the President, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Otumba Francis Meshui, as it comes forward. A round of applause for the President, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Our special guest of honor is Excellency Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, GCFR, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Ably represented by the Honorable Minister, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Dr. Doris Anite. And for some reasons uh, that she couldn't come, uh, we have who differed this to uh, the one who has really been, who has come to represent the, how will I put it? The President, the Honorable Minister, or both. And our brother, uh, the uh, Executive Secretary of Financial Reporting Council, uh, Dr. Oluo. Good morning and you're welcome. Thank you very much. Our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Olu Aganga, CON. Our special guest is Excellency Otumba Ni Adebayo, who I just learned this morning because of his passion for the industry and manufacturing business in particular, be named not just a mister, but a high chief and October manufacturer. So please give, <laughs> I think you should give a round of applause for him. I did not confer the title, but this title was conferred by no less person by the one-time guru of the industry which they actually serve, and that's Chief Kola Jamudu, who was former minister of the same Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. And 
was our president for a good four years and I've served manufacturers which of Nigeria meritoriously for how many years before I will even think of manufacturing. A round of applause for Chief Kola Jamudu, please. Thank you, sir, you're welcome. The representative of uh, Mr. Governor, uh, Hon. Mrs. Folashadi Ambrose Medebe, Honorable Commissioner for Trade, Commerce, Cooperative and Investment, Lagos State. Uh, when I used to be the chairman of the Kedja branch, that used to be, I call my ministry. And I'm so glad to have you in this occasion. I think it will be one of the rare occasions who have not just Mr. Governor being represented, but even having someone, the commissioner, who actually is the main that manufacturing sector reside in Lagos State to have come to a national event like this. Kindly join me to put a round of applause to our commissioner. Just a good guest. And ladies and gentlemen, past president here, present, uh, past president, um, Ambassador Nawakili, and other past president here present, and I've mentioned Chief Kola Jamodu and the rest. I'm so happy to have you. Uh, I can see my past president, my past president, immediate past president. You have changed. Please, can you stand up? Let us see that you have changed. You have changed. I was expecting to see you here. You're welcome. Thank you so much. I will have, um, it will have been very much a big problem for me if I have not recognized you. You have put a sunglasses that I will not know. Thank you. I was able to avoid the fun I will have gotten because you hand over this, handed over this man to, uh, to me. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so happy to have you on this occasion. Gentlemen of the press, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the third Adeola Odutola lecture and presidential luncheon. When the last part of activities marking the 51st annual general meeting of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. On behalf of the National Council and members of MAN, I'm delighted to welcome once again our guest of honor, His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu GCFR. We are indeed honored by Mr. President's kind acceptance of the invitation. We understand that it's not with us today due to the exigencies of his assorted office. We are, however, delighted that he is represented by the most appropriate and able minister and being able represented by the ES uh, FRC. Mr. President, sir, and I also use this opportunity to congratulate you once again on your election as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Did the first man AGM after your inauguration, and we are pleased to have Your Excellency ably represented there. We are enthused by the presence of the Honorable Minister, having sent warm regards to us, though we really expect, him, expect us so passionately. You know that these are early days since your assumption of your office as a minister. Your dignified presence is a testimony of your commitment to fostering a strategy and close partnership with your first constituency, the manufacturing sector of our economy. Honorable Minister, you are the number one ambassador of Mr. President in the task of actualizing his promise to prioritize the growth of domestic manufacturing. We warmly welcome you to the third Adiola Dutola lecture and presidential luncheon of our great association. This is just to remind you again, is the leading sector of specific business membership organization in Africa. I will formally want to equally honor uh, to equally appreciate the presence of our illustrious Nigeria, a consummate accountant, an accomplished economist, and international transformational economist, who is our guest speaker today to deliver the third Adiola Odutola lecture. It's no other than a former two-time minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a former man managing director of Goldman Sachs, London, 
the founder of Nigeria Leadership Initiative and Naspen Global Leadership Network, Mr. Oluchagun Olutoy Aganga, CON. We all remember him as a former Minister of Finance as well as Minister of Industry, Trade and Investments of Nigeria. You are very much welcome, sir, our guest speaker. We are all delighted to have His Excellency Otubani Adebayo, a former governor of Ikiti State and immediate past Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment to join us on this occasion. We are happy to have you present the book, Turning the Way, a story of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. This is by way of public presentation of the foreword that you graciously appended in the book. Your Excellency, Otumba Ni Adebayo, and Otumba Manufacturers, you are so much work. This year, GM, you agree with me my distinguished members and colleagues, that it is an exceptional one. We are blessed with the unprecedented presence of three outstanding Nigerians. Two of them, have, actually the three are former ministers of this very industry under which, under whose umbrella manufacturers of the of Nigeria reside. And we're so honored too to have the representative of our able president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Amisos. We are all very happy and we are blessed at this occasion and we believe your blessings really inspire the growth of manufacturing sector and raise the bar that we are hitherto trying to achieve in the past years. Similarly, I have the singular honor to acknowledge the presence of international development partners, members of the diplomatic corps, directors and head of ministries, departments, and agencies of the Federal Republic of Nigeria here present, members of the organized private sector of Nigeria, and I can see our man brother from NECA here and the rest too, members of the business community, our former president and director generals, who have seen about two of them, with numerous captains of industry, scholars, and our partners in the media space, please, I appreciate and thank you all immensely for coming. The economy, and in particular, the manufacturing sector, has been the worst hit by the combination of external and domestic challenges. Starting from 2015-2016, the Nigeria economy expressed a recession triggered by the global financial crisis that was due to the sharp decline in the oil market. And just as we are beginning to recover from the recession, a global health pandemic emerged, disrupted economic activities and global supply chains, posing a significant threat to businesses and our industry in particular. Your Excellency, Mr. President, sir, our association has taken due notice of your policy pronouncements, particularly within your first 100 days in office. Some bold policy actions, we agree. This includes the removal of web subsidy and introduction of money flow of the exchange rate. This has elicited the commendation of most economic actors and stakeholders. But the fallout of those measures have equally thrown up some policy imperatives that should be addressed in order for the economy to rebound from the citizens, for the citizenry to appreciate and reap the long-term benefits of the various reform measures that you have just pronounced. In addition, we seek your intervention to facilitate an engagement between central bank and man to discuss the recent lifting of the restriction on access to foreign exchange on 43 items. Your Excellency, we are confident that the outcomes of conversation will allow the CBN to achieve its objective of reducing pressure on the parallel market and effective control of the foreign exchange administration. At the same time, it will ensure that the domestic production is not overrun by influx of imported alternative and our raw materials that are locally available 
could be procured using the official market. Your Excellencies in reception, man has been at the forefront of promoting and advancing the industrial development of our nation. In the course of his journey, our association has engaged in impactful collaborations and a continuous engagement with the Nigeria government and other relevant stakeholders, both within and outside of the country. MAN has consistently provided a platform for manufacturers to come together to share their expertise and resources in order to expand the frontier of economic development and foster gross broader value chain to achieve sustainable economic growth and development. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment remain our greatest ally. Your ministry is a leader that will claim to reach the presidency and our ambassador to other ministries as well, including departments and agencies of governments. We are confident that you will raise the bar in this regard and that collaboration and partnership will grow in leaps and bounds during your tenure. This is good guys, ladies and gentlemen. The theme of this year's annual general meeting is setting the agenda for competitive manufacturing order after what Nigeria needs to do. The motivation behind this theme is the manufacturing sector successful low performance over the years. At the same time, we are looking at the promising growth tra trajectory and development opportunities that are embedded in the African Continental Free Trade Agreement for the Nigeria manufacturing sector. It has become a matter of necessity and urgency to deepen our awareness of the imperative of AFTA. We need to develop the right strategies and concerted efforts to position our economy as the number one manufacturing hub of the African economy. Evidences from several parts of the world, including China, United States, Japan, Germany, South Korea, have shown the importance of manufacturing sector in building a resilient economy. As an example, in 2021, Average manufacturing account output accounted for as high as 35% of Ireland's GDP growth, 37.44% in the case of China, and 48% in, in the case of Puerto Rico's economy. In the United States, it accounted for more than 60% of the total exports and about 35% of the U.S. economy totals productivity growth in Nigeria. The contribution of the manufacturing sector, the total output is not higher than 10%, with an average growth rate of approximately 2.3 over the last five quarters. Manufacturing sector development is key to industrialization. And I'm very, I'm afraid that this growth might have dropped a bit if it is well measured given the recent uh, occurrences. Sadly, the growth of industrialization in Nigeria remains at a very, very low level, very, very low. Based on the African Development Bank Industrialization Index, Nigeria is here to perform impressively. The UNIDOS Industrial Competitive Performance Index has equally shown that Nigeria's industrial sector has a low competitive capacity. Your Excellency, this is the guest, ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that there is no better time than now to confront the challenge of low competitiveness and basement performance of this very important sector. Your Excellency, it is pertinent to keep to really let you inform you of the some issue that really militates against the performance of the manufacturing sector. I'll take few of them because of time, because I want to give a very ample time to our distinguished guest speaker without really 
stroking him, we want to learn from him. I'll mention a few of the numbers of issues that are really hindering our performance. And I have said it several, several times from the time I can never remember being a member of MAN. And I will create a few of them in the next few minutes. The first one is multiple taxation. An average member of MAN is subjected to no less than 30 different forms of taxes, fees, and levies. The consequences of the incidence of multiple taxation are immense and include the rise cost of doing business and rapid divestment in the manufacturing sector. This includes combined to the price demand, worsening job losses, and increasing incidence of poverty and low revenue generation from the sector. And I can only say, government needs to realize one thing, that the more it, this is done, the, more, the less the government will gain. If government wants to get taxes, the boss needs to ensure the manufacturing sector has a lot of profits from where it can generate its taxes. A lot of businesses will create a lot of withholding taxes, a lot of VAT for you, and CIT as well. Internet is working in reverse, and it will be difficult to really achieve the goal of getting the money which actually the federal government is desirous of getting. However, we are confident that the Presidential Committee on Physical Policy and tax reform will adequately address the matter. Our Director General represents the organized private sector on the committee, and we look forward to working jointly with the representative of your Ministry of Industry, Trade, and Investment on the committee to make a case of fair taxation of the manufacturing sector. Another important thing that we suffer of, high cost of borrowing. This is another major constraint that actually the manufacturing sector is facing, high interest rate. The average bank lending rate for manufacturers is 26%. We acquired the 9% interest rate on the 75 billion loan facility for a minimum of 75 companies that was recently promised by Mr. President. While commending His Excellency for this initiative, we are hopeful that it could even come at a lower rate and Ma will be given the opportunity to work with the government to determine deserving sectors, agree the disbursement modalities, and join the evaluation and monitoring of its effectiveness. We believe that this inclusive approach will guarantee more success and create a basis for granting much more a bigger emergency fund for the beleaguered manufacturing sector in the near future. If I do not mention the next item, I will not have done anything worthwhile with my speech of mentioning. That is infrastructural inadequacies or deficiency, as some people would say it. Poor infrastructure, including inadequate power supply, poor road networks, and inefficient port facilities are serious impediments to the growth of the manufacturing sector. We look forward to government to improve investment and undertake effective reforms to guarantee reliable power supply, good road networks, and efficient port system. What about the local content development and the patronage of made in Nigeria goods? Nigeria has a low local content adoption and patronage of made in Nigeria products is very, very low. We urge His Excellency to ensure effective enforcement of local content and patronage regulations. This can be achieved by strict enforcement of local content laws, incentivizing local sourcing of raw materials and innovation in the manufacturing sector. Also, the public sectors at all levels should, as a matter of national importance, set up their compliance with existing government directive on patronage of made in Nigeria products, 
including executive orders 003 and 005. Perhaps at that point, I should mention what we discussed some time ago, and I mentioned this to this when we started the issue, Excellency, that perhaps the federal government will declare one day as a day of manufacturing or made in Nigeria day. This day, it will be fine if it's directed that all and every pastors will do nothing but to wear made in Nigeria clothes, ensure that made in Nigeria products are, are, are really uh, embraced, and uh, if you do this, it's going to really increase the products outward. The production will go up with a high patronage, and you bring more competitiveness, and people will be conscious that patronage of made in Nigeria products is very crucial for the development of our economy. Another factor point that is not seen easily is integration of the manufacturing sector. There's a poor inter sectoral integration of the sector with other sectors. Manufacturing sector being the, one of the sectors of the economy with wide sectoral interlinkages. However, the low level development of auxiliary sectors is disentangling the manufacturing sector of the rest of the sectors. This is mostly in agriculture, iron and steel, and mining sectors. This has resulted in limited supply of raw materials and other input for the manufacturing sector. Therefore, it is essential to encourage backward integration deliberately and sectoral linkages to promote a more sustainable manufacturing sector in Nigeria. And there is no better time than now because importation of raw materials, while it is key, it is very, it is specializing our forex so much. And if you have to source our local material locally, I'm sure that there is on the demand of forex. And that is just maybe to discuss the shortage of foreign exchange. Man appreciate the new administration policy on exchange rate unification as part of the measure to address the forex crisis. However, the problem is only half solved as forex strategies and high rates persist in the market. Addressing supply in energy cases is critical to a resilient manufacturing sector and what government to intensify its current efforts in this regard. I'm so much confident that our distinguished guest speaker, who has served as the past minister of the industry, will adequately address these issues and more in greater details. In my conclusion, I will say, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing on the course of a new and critical era. Though the manufacturing sector is passing through hard and challenging times, setting a comprehensive agenda for the sector's transformation will enhance its competitiveness and unlock its full potential. Man has always been a key partner to government and remain willing and available and ready to support the government in formulation and executing its policy. We therefore, NST seek some means. I think that's the takeaway to our want is essential to have. We seek a summit to engage the government and the higher ministerial level to discuss the fate of the manufacturing sector in Nigeria. On this note says, Your Excellency, this is guest, ladies and gentlemen. I warmly welcome you to the third Adiola Auditorial Lecture and Presidential Luncheon of the Manufacturing as Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Thank you so much for listening attentively. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, the President of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. Please let's put our hands together for him. Thank you. So let's not get tired of listening. Uh, this is the third Adiola Odutola lecture. And so there'll be a lot of lecture, a lot of talking. Let's just endure because this is just happening only for today. But that was a very detailed welcome address and we believe His Excellency has heard all that the President has proposed. And sure, when he has an opportunity to speak, he would speak to all of those issues that were raised. Thank you. So before I invite the next person to give the goodwill message, I have some persons I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, we have the representative of the DG of NIPS here present. He is the Ed CIS Academy. Please, a round of applause for 
Shukudi Nga. A round of applause for him. Thank you. Also, we have the Director General of uh, NASIMA, uh, Mr. Shola Obadimu. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Also, we have the Commercial Consul, uh, Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Lagos. We have Yu Pengwen. A round of applause for you. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. And next, to give a goodwill message at this event, I have the honor of inviting the UNIDO rep. Uh, that's the National Program Officer for UNIDO. A round of applause for Mr. Osu Otu as he comes forward. Thank you. We, we really just started and our applause is getting cold. Please, can we put your hands together? Thank you so much. Mr. Osu Otu from UNIDO. The representative of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the representative of the Governor of Lagos State, Otumba Francis, make sure you're the President of MAN, the DG of MAN, all the CEOs of small and big industries here present, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Suji Otu. I'm the National Program Officer. United Nations Industrial Development Organization. I'm representing the regional director, Mr. Bakole, who is unavoidably absent. I'm going to read this goodwill message. I wish to express my sincere gratitude to the President and Director General of MAN for inviting me to the 51st Annual General Conference AGM. I want to appreciate all the CEOs of small and big industries the team for the AGM setting the agenda for competitive manufacturing under the AF CFTA is apt and relevant to the discussion of, on AFCFTA. It gives a deep reflection over the growth paths of the manufacturing sector in Nigeria and Africa. It also examines the role of the manufacturing sector in the actualization of the AFCFTA and the integration of the African economy as envisioned in the Agenda 2063. Ladies and gentlemen, the manufacturing industry is crucial to Nigeria's economy. It plays a significant role in generating employment, driving productivity and economic growth, as well as contributing significantly to the country's GDP. Through wealth creation and increased tax revenue, for the government. The sector has equally been identified as key in the nation's quest for diversification away from oil and gas dependency. Unfortunately, Nigeria's manufacturing industry has long struggled with a host of challenges that have prevented it from achieving its full potential. Some of these challenges include lack of reliable infrastructure, which include power shortages, poor road networks, access to finance, modern technology, adequate raw materials, volatility of foreign exchange market, difficulty in assessing forex and currency depreciation, skill level, rising taxes. Furthermore, Nigerian manufacturers also face intense competition from cheaper imports, particularly from Asia. This puts pressure on local producers to keep their prices low, even as they struggle with high costs of production and limited resources. These challenges have contributed to slowing down the growth of the manufacturing sector in Nigeria. Over the years, the Nigerian government has been making remarkable efforts towards supporting local manufacturers but a lot still needs to be done. Governments cannot do it alone. Therefore, all hands should be on deck to improve the sector. Some of the strategies will include promoting sustainable industrial development through appropriate policies, programs, and incentives, improving the ease of doing business by reducing the bureaucratic bottlenecks that hamper manufacturing 
activities in Nigeria, improving access to credit, investment in critical infrastructure, such as power, transportation, telecommunications, and investment in research and development to encourage innovation and improve the quality and start of locally manufactured goods. Ladies and gentlemen, UNIDO, which stands for United Nations Industrial Development Organization, is a specialized UN agency with a broad mandate in promoting inclusive and sustainable industrial development. Through the Nigeria Country Program, UNIDO is supporting the federal and state governments to provide solutions to the challenges facing local manufacturers through the development of appropriate industry and environmental policies, promoting renewable energy, especially the use of small hydropower to generate affordable energy for productive use, supporting the development of MSMEs and startups through capacity building, study tour and training, trade capacity building to promote the production of standard and quality goods for local, regional, that's AFCFTA, and international markets, development of special economic zones and agro-industrial parks. Ladies and gentlemen, UNIDO applauds the government for its strategic efforts in supporting local manufacturers, especially its policies on reducing over-dependence on imported foreign goods, especially those with local substitutes. However, there is need for more effort from the government and all stakeholders to achieve this feat. Through the Nigeria ongoing 2018 to 2023 country program, and especially the upcoming 2023 to 2027 program for country partnership, UNIDO will continue to actively and effectively support the government of Nigeria and all economic actors to ap appropriate programs and activities to strengthen local manufacturers to produce standard and high quality made in Nigerian goods. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to congratulate the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, its members, and all manufacturers here present and pledge you need those continuous commitments in enhancing the excellent long-standing cooperation with the federal government of Nigeria and reaffirm our support and collaboration to strengthen local manufacturers to produce standard and high quality made in Nigerian products to promote economic growth, sustainable development, and drastically reduce poverty. On this note, I wish you all a successful AGM God bless Nigeria. God bless Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah, thank sir. You. Thank you. All right, we move to the next goodwill message, uh, which is the last for today, except um, if I'm informed otherwise. Uh, but I'd like to acknowledge um, principals who have served this association, and we're pleased to have them in our midst. We have two former director generals here in person of Mr. G.D. A. Mike. A round of applause for him. Thank you so much for joining us. And we equally have Chief Remy Ogumefon with us. A round of applause for him as well. Thank you. And uh, for the goodwill message, I'd like to invite uh, the ambassador of Cote d'Ivoire, His Excellency Kalilo Traore to give his goodwill message. A round of applause for him as he comes forward. Thank you, sir. Your Excellency is an eminent guest here present. Allow me to stand on the protocol already established. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, in your high ranks, grade and qualities. It's a great honor for me 
to be invited at this uh, General Assembly of Manufacturer Association of Côte d'Ivoire of, of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> it's an uh, even greater honor to offer me the opportunity to address this August Assembly. I express uh, all my gratitude and thanks uh, to the Honorable President of uh, MAN, Mr. Meshoye, I hope I pronounce very well, his Vice President and all his collaborators. On this occasion, allow me to convey a greeting from Côte d'Ivoire, and particularly from the Confederation of uh, Large Enterprises of Côte d'Ivoire, the counterpart of your association. Allow me to recall and commend the convention signed in 2021 between the two organizations to develop cooperation and business potential between Nigeria and Côte d'Ivoire. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you who already know Côte d'Ivoire may testify what I can tell you about the dynamics of uh, Côte d'Ivoire economy. Indeed, Côte d'Ivoire is currently one of the leading country, African countries, in terms of economic growth since more than 10 years. This growth is the result of a solid and uh, stable governance and investments coming from domestic and foreign investors. If I tell you about this, it is to invite you to discover the country for yourself and to expand your business there. Côte d'Ivoire and Nigeria have already commercial and economic exchanges in several areas, but we are still far from the potential between the two countries. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot miss uh, such a great opportunity to say you about the final phases of the African Cup of Nations, which Côte d'Ivoire will host from January, 13 January to 11 February 2024. You know that football being the king sport in Africa, this event will be one of the biggest events in the continent next year. This will be also a great occasion for people coming from all over the world to discover the country and to do business. I would like to invite all of you to take this opportunity to visit Côte d'Ivoire and expand your business there. You certainly know that the national, Nigeria national football team is qualified for this phase, and they will need your support to win this cup. The embassy of Côte d'Ivoire in Abuja will organize the launch and promotion activities uh, next month for uh, this uh, event. For those who want to come to Côte d'Ivoire at this occasion, we will give them all the information for that. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, I would like to close my remarks by reiterating my thanks to your kind attention. God bless Nigeria, Côte d'Ivoire, and all the world. Merci, Monsieur Traore. Thank you so much for uh, that goodwill message. We appreciate you, and we value your presence. And so before I invite the Director General to do the honors of bringing the distinguished guest lecturer to engage us for the next few minutes, 
I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Director General of the uh, Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA. A round of applause for Mr. Adewale Smart Oyeri Day. Thank you, sir. We value you. At this point, I'd like to invite Mr. Shegun Ajayi Kadri, MNI, for the next item, which is to invite the guest speaker. A round of applause for him as he comes forward. I thank you, Omotayo. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my duty here is very simple and straightforward. I'm trying to bring to you a son of Africa that we are very proud of, somebody who has demonstrated uncommon commitment to the development of his country and his continent. I'd like to give you a brief about our distinguished guest speaker. It's a very short one because if I make it long, that will be the guest lecture itself. Olushe Guaganga, CON, is a chartered accountant with professional career extending over four decades in the private and public sectors. He was Nigeria's Minister of Finance and chairman of the economic management team from 2010 to 2011. And then it's Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment from 2011 to 2015. He was a major contributor to, the, to making Nigeria the premier destination for investment in Africa. He was also responsible for many transformational milestones in Nigeria, including establishing the country's sovereign wealth fund, issuing the nation's first euro bond, structuring and sourcing the finance for the first standard gauge rail in Nigeria, and developing the country's industrial revolution plan. <laughs> Proud to becoming a minister, he was managing director of Goldman Sachs London, and before then, he was a senior director at S. and Young London. He was also the chairman of the Board of Governors of the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, that's the IMF, in 2010 and in 2011. That's not all. He was chairman of the World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference, making him the first African to chair these two organizations. <laughs> Currently, Olusegun sits on a number of boards and is an advisor to companies and governments in the UK, the US, and Nigeria. He is the founder of the Nigerian Leadership Institute the chairman of the board of Leadway Pension PFA Limited, a board member of TechnoSav in the US, an advisory board member of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust, and a member of the Investors Advisory Council of Time Partners in the UK. Thank you. Olusegun is the author of a bestseller, reclaiming the jewel of Africa. I'm honored and privileged to bring to you Mr. Olusha Guanganga, CON, to deliver the distinguished lecture of the third Adeola Odutola lecture series. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my namesake, Olusegun Ajayi Kadri. Um, His Excellency, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Governor of Lagos State, ably represented here today, the President of MAN and Council Members, and of course, the past Presidents of MAN seated there, oh, 
they all seated here, the two of them, all seated here. It's my pleasure to have you, to see you. And of course, the immediate past Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Otumba Ni Adibayo. Allow me, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to stand on the existing, the protocol already established. I am delighted and honored to be the guest speaker at this third Adiola Odutola lecture as part of the 51st annual general meeting of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. I have been asked to speak on the theme, setting the agenda for competitive manufacturing under the African continental free trade area, what Nigeria needs to do. But because of time constraints, I shall be delivering an abridged version of the lecture. A copy of the full lecture has already been delivered to man. The African Continental Free Trade Area, which came into force in January 2021, has created the largest free trade area in the world covering about 54 African countries and a combined population of over 1.4 billion people. This landmark agreement opens up a plethora of opportunities for African, for intra-African trade and economic collaboration. The African continental free trade area is situated within the context of Africa Agenda 2063, also known as the Africa We Want. Africa Agenda 2063 is a strategic framework developed by the African Union to guide the continent's development over the next five decades, from 2013 to 2063. Manufacturing plays a central role in the realization of this agenda. It is seen as a key driver of economic transformation and industrialization, capable of generating employment, fostering intra-African trade, technological advancement, and the reduction of poverty. The emphasis on manufacturing in both the African continental free trade area and Agenda 2063, it's not surprising, given that the manufacturing sector accounts for about 70% of global trade and about 30 to 55% of service jobs are related to the manufacturing sector. It is important to make it absolutely clear from the outset that in modern global economy, industrial development is not luck. Industrial development does not happen by accident. It is a nation's choice. Countries must therefore have an intentional, precise, and intense approach to nurturing and expanding industrial activities. This is even more important paramount for a country like Nigeria, starting from a relatively low manufacturing base that we've heard from the other speakers. Therefore, in setting the agenda for Nigeria's competitive manufacturing, I would first of all like to share some of the initiatives and actions other countries particularly Nigeria's competitors in and outside Africa have taken to improve their competitiveness. China, I understand there's all in the room here representing China here, so you hear me talk a bit about your country. China remains the largest exporter into Africa and will remain the biggest competitor in Nigeria and other 
African markets, even with the African continental free trade area in place. So I will focus on China a bit because there are lots of lessons to be harvested from there. We do not need to reinvent the wheel. Over the years, China has implemented various strategies to make its product competitive in Asia and in, its, and in the global markets. Some key factors that have contributed to China's competitiveness include, of course, heavy investment in economic and trade-related infrastructure, the establishment of special economic zones like such as the one we have in Shenzhen and Pudong, with adequate infrastructure, I emphasize the word infrastructure. They also offered incentives to attract foreign investors and multinational corporations to set up manufacturing facilities in the country. They identified and supported strategic industries that were critical for its industrial development and provided financial incentives, subsidies, a word we don't like in this country, and support, and for good reason, and support to those industries to promote growth, exports, and competitiveness. China is also taking the falling steps now to become even more competitive globally. On innovation and technology, it is investing heavily in research and development, aiming to become a global leader in technology and innovation through initiatives like Made in China 2025, which is called Make 25, 2025, and China Standards 2035. Under the Belt and Road Initiative, I believe the Vice President of the countries is in China today attending a conference related to BRI, China continues to expand its global infrastructure and connectivity projects. The BRI, which involves investment in transportation, energy, and telecommunications infrastructure in partner countries. The truth of that is that this will make it easier and cheaper to move their goods to those countries. Nigeria, Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa, Senegal, and 12 other African countries are partners in this program. The interesting thing is that these are also target countries for Nigeria under the African Continental Free Trade Zone. And it makes it very, very clear that you will be competing with China heavily. Are you prepared for that? Of course, again, industrial upgrade China is shifting from low cost manufacturing to high value added industries, such as advanced manufacturing, biotechnology, and green energies. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, what are the considerations for Nigeria's own agenda? I will start by saying that Nigeria must act decisively and quickly. It must begin now to do the following. First of all, I believe it must agree on a vision of industrialization with targets that the whole country will buy into. Develop policy and plan of implementation the Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan, which I'm delighted man helped develop under President Chief Kola Jamudu at the time, <laughs> is a very good starting point. Let me remind you of what the NROP set out to achieve when we developed that plan at the time. It was to make Nigeria a top 10 global player in at least 10 key manufacturing sectors within the next five to 10 years. This was a vision 
and we thought it was realistic then as I do today. Nigeria officially launched its industrial plan in 2014, commenced implementation, and then put it in the cooler for eight years thereabout. Until I'm delighted to say Ni and his team decided to work on it again towards the end of his uh, tenure. But we put it to bed for eight years. If it, if it had been implemented rigorously, Nigeria would have become a top competitive global exporter in at least three or four of the 13 products identified for export by now. It's all about continuity. It's all about discipline. I believe it's a job of man and the government, led by His Excellency the President, and supported by the Minister of, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy to keep the industrial vision of this great nation alive and make it the cornerstone of the government's plan. The second thing is about continuity. Continuity is key. Continuity is our major problem. Not plans. When I was in government, I saw many, many plans go through each ministry. There are plans there, so many plans. And I ended up saying, I was always saying that we are long. I use the word expression of a hedge fund manager. I say, we are long on plans and very short on implementation. China, Germany, and the United Kingdom and others are on their fourth industrial revolution plan. And unlike Nigeria, South Africa has an automotive policy that it reviews, enhances periodically, and that it has implemented rigorously for more than 60 years. A policy for more than 60 years. The nearest we have done is in the cement industry. All the others have it. We keep on changing them and stopping them. All too. South Africa had this discipline to do that for 60 years. That is why at a particular time, South Africa accounted for more than 95% of the non-oil exports by African countries to the United States under the AGOA program, exporting cars and spare parts mainly. And in 1980, China was the seventh largest economy with a GDP of only $305 billion. While the United States of America was then at $2.86 trillion. In 1978-79, China commenced the implementation of its economic reform which included its industrial plan. These reforms and plans were rigorously implemented. I'm still talking about the importance of continuity. These reforms and plans were rigorously implemented over 35 years, and the results were astonishing. An average growth of about 10% for many, many years and now the largest economy in the world in PPP terms, PPP terms, of about 25.27 trillion, and an industrial powerhouse today. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what manufacturing does and what Nigeria is missing. It multiplies national wealth. The following three slides will tell you the story and consequences of the lack of continuity and a plan, an industrial plan. So if the first slide, can you show the first slide? You've got to, yes, this, this slide. Um, it's not shown, but if you look at the numbers, there should be, if you look at the 
if you look at the numbers, the numbers will tell you, even without looking at the trend itself, that those numbers tell you that the best year for industry was between 2011 and 2014. That was when, I think, there was active collaboration between man and the government. Nigeria, this, these numbers will tell you that Nigeria has been de-industrializing for a while. Not improving, you've been de-industrializing. It will also tell you that when government promotes and supports industrialization, the industry responds positively and we all benefit as a country. If you look at the numbers, you will see that manufacturing growth was under 4% until 2011, when the growth was about 17.8% in 2011, from 4% to 17.8%. The double-digit growth was maintained every year, reaching a peak of 24.6% in 2012. This was a period we increased the capacity for cement production from 11 million metric tons to about 32 million metric tons and become a net exporter of cement in the country. And you will see, if you look at these numbers, that from 2015, we started get, getting neg negative growth. That is the story of manufacturing growth in Nigeria. We have been de-industrializing rather than improving and, and getting bigger. The next slide, please, you can put on the next slide. The next slide, what I tried to do here was to compare Nigeria with the mint economies and also with some African economies. And you will see Nigeria is a red one. And what it tells you, what, it, what we're doing there, is that we're looking at ma manufacturing as a percentage of GDP. And I think you had numbers of 35, 40% from other speakers. But you see that Nigeria is, is all just at 10%. That's where we are. The bottom here, you can see Korea, you can see all the other countries, you can see Turkey, you can see Mexico, you can see Indonesia, which is very similar to Nigeria, see where they are. Most of the countries are operating above 25%, we are operating under 10%. That is not where we should be as a country. When you look at the next slide, it's telling you, because manufacturing creates jobs, it is telling you that even we're not taking advantage of that industry enough, because you can see us there again, Nigeria in red. You can see we're still under, around 10%, under 10%. And look at the jobs, Egypt. Manufacturing is contributing to the workforce in Egypt, in Turkey, in South Korea, in Mexico, in Indonesia. So I think this will tell you the story that we are missing as a nation when we compare ourselves to other countries. Thank you very much. Okay, it's here, thank you very much. Now, underpinning all this is a business environment. I already have a detailed SWOT analysis in the full text I delivered to man, but permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to mention a few here. One of the biggest determinants of how much investment an economy attracts is the macroeconomic environment. An environment where inflation is at a record high level, still rising, exchange rates are high and volatile, and a large percentage of our national income is going towards servicing debts cannot foster the kind of stimulus our economy needs. There is a need to design a macroeconomic framework that will be supervised by a strong macroeconomic management team 
that is accountable to the president. The CBN cannot do it alone. If there's any message, go and look at the causes of inflation, the causes of exchange rate. I look at the causes before you start talking about the symptoms. When you look at the causes, you will find out the CBN alone cannot address this problem. You need a team of the economic ministries to work together to get this done. And this is what I am proposing for the country to do. CBN will do its best, but CBN alone will not deliver single digit inflation. And that is the goal. Also, of course, you talk, you've heard from the president of man on some of the other challenges you have, I would say it's important to reconstitute the National Competitiveness Council. Over the past few years, National Competitiveness Council, NCC, have proven to be one of the most successful approaches to institutionalizing public-private dialogue on competitiveness globally. That was a catalyst for setting up the first NCC in 2014. Unfortunately, it was discontinued when I left the government. In general, the purpose of a NCC is to provide a platform call for constructive public-private dialogue on economic competitiveness, provide objective information on the state of competitiveness in the country and raise awareness of the strong link between national competitiveness, business performance, economic growth, and the population's prosperity and well-being to government, businesses, and the public. Security of lives and property the national value system and the rule of, rule of law also have to be addressed to improve our business environment. I have not talked about the obvious thing that the president has talked about, about multiple taxation levies. And we all know that already. I am telling you about the other things that are not known to you, but are big contributions to the issues you need to address. Some may be wondering, for those of you who may be wondering, what the values, what, what values have to do with competitiveness. I will remind you that Japan, Japan's industrial plan and sectors where they, are, they have a competitive advantage are partly based on their core values of discipline, attitude to work, and attention to details. Go and look at the sectors where South Korea is strong. There are areas where you need to have attention to details, and this based on their core values. And also, I'll remind you that the World Economic Forum had identified poor work ethics in the national labor force as an area of concern for Nigeria. Nigeria must rebuild its value system and link it to economic prosperity. Law and order and value system are two sides of the same coin. The fourth point I want to talk about is of course the importance of updating and implementing Nigeria's industrial revolution plan. Almost all the global exporters Nigeria will be competing with have new plans. As discussed earlier, China, the largest exporter of goods to Nigeria and Africa, has already commenced Made in China 2025 plan. Germany, on their part, has been on the forefront of the industry 4.0 revolution, which is about smart factories that will manufacture products in a more flexible, energy efficient, and resource-saving and cost-effective manner. The United Kingdom has also commenced its fourth industrial revolution plan. South Africa, Morocco, and Egypt have been promoting manufacturing and, value and adding value 
to their exports, particularly in sectors like automotive, agribusiness, and chemicals. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, there is no better time than now for Nigeria to update and commence the rigorous implementation of its own industrial revolution plan. The Sovereign Wealth Fund and indeed the NNPC or NNPCL can play a major role in Nigeria's agenda as they did in Brazil, in United Arab Emirates, in Malaysia, and South, Saudi Arabia, where they helped to the example I gave in the book, Reclaiming the Jewel of Africa, is Saudi Basic Industries Corporation, known as SABIC. I visited the country, the company in Saudi Arabia. SABIC is a Saudi Arabian multinational corporation that was established in 1976 by Aramco. Aramco is Saudi Arabia's NNPC. But it began production in 1981 with an investment of only $1.8 billion. Today, SABIC is the second largest diversified chemical company in the world and a market leader in many products. Its mandate is to pioneer and drive gas industrialization in Saudi Arabia by adding value to the gas they produce. The company had total assets of about $83 billion at the end of December 2022, operates in 50 different countries, employs more than 31,000 people, and generated about $47 billion in sales only in 2022. The interesting thing about Stabic is that Stabic that was set up by Aramco, their own NNPC, has in turn created the Saudi Iron and Steel Company which is now one of the world's largest fully integrated producers of iron and steel. Malaysia and Kazana Funds, I visited Malaysia, I had charged with Kazana Funds, and the UAE use mobile data to produce competitive industries. We can do the same in Nigeria to accelerate industrialization in identified sectors. But the difference is that Nigeria does not need to start from scratch. What it needs to do is to find genuine manufacturers and identify sectors with potential, invest heavily in them, and put a robust governance system in place. The model I use in the book is the NLNG, and to some extent in Durama. Development of the MSME sector is also critical to any agenda we need to put in place to support competitive manufacturing in Nigeria. All over the world, MSMEs are primary drivers of employment and economic growth. In China and Brazil, MSMEs employ 75% and 70% of the workforce respectively. The last survey conducted by the NBS and SMEDAM in 2020, they undertake surveys every three years, I believe, identified 40 million MSMEs, employing 76.5% of Nigeria's workforce. So we are at the same level in terms of uh, contribution compared to Brazil and China. Accounting for 49.78% of our GDP and 7.64% of our export. I must say that enough attention has not been given to this important sector that contributes, accounts for about 76% of our workforce. 
particularly since 2017. According to the survey by MDS and Smeda, the number of enterprises in the sector grew by 20 million from 17 million in 2010 to 37 million in 2013. Again, the same year that you had all those double digit growths between 2011 and 2014. Between 2013 and 2017, it grew by both only 4 million. And in 2020, it fell by 2 million to 40 million, partly due to the effects of COVID. It is important to reconstitute the National MSME Council that was set up in 2014 to facilitate growth and competitiveness in the sector and to implement the National Enterprise Development Program. State councils should be set up to complement the National Council. I'm delighted the Commissioner is here, and she, uh, I'm delighted to talk to her more about it, about what Lagos State can do. It is also important to link the MSMEs to the large companies to, to have that chain uh, completed. We need to focus, this other point we need to address is, is a focus on export-oriented growth. In 1980, China and Nigeria each accounted for 1% of the global world exports. So we were at par with China in 98, accounting for 1% of the global world exports. However, by 2011, China accounted for 11% of the global exports, all non-oil, while Nigeria was less than 0.4% and still going down. China has grown richer and its currency, the yuan, much stronger. Like the Chinese, the only way to strengthen the Naira is to increase productivity, increase capacity, and become export-oriented. Nigeria's export to GDP ratio is also very low one can, when compared to Malaysia, which is about 76%, South Africa at 1%, Brazil 12%. Nigeria, we need to earn about 72 billion from non-oil exports to achieve 15%. Nigeria must now prioritize attracting and retaining foreign investments into sectors identified for exports to boost our export capacity. There was talk about the role at the heart of the economic and industrial revolution of most countries is the strategic use of special economic zones or industrial zones. Nigeria adopted this policy decades ago, as other countries did, creating two agencies, NEPSA and the ONE Oil and Gas Free Zone Authority. Nigeria licensed over 30 free trade zones, but only about five set up by the private sector are considered to be successful or partially successful. Again, this was a result of the poor implementation of a very good policy that has worked in other countries. If Nigeria improves on the quality of implementation, we can use these free trade zones to gain competitive advantage as Malaysia, India, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Kenya, and Egypt have all done. Industrial infrastructure is, is critical. Inadequate economic and trade-related infrastructure significantly limits our productivity and increases the cost of production and logistics. The lack of electricity alone adds about 20 to 30 percent to the cost of production. And of course, the recent increase in fuel prices has further increased the cost of production. The problem has persisted due to the poor implementation of various infrastructure development plans. I recall 
And Gina Mazo and I, when I was Minister of Finance, we worked on an infrastructure plan. There are many, all in the Kula. It's all about the lack of poor implementation of infrastructure development plan, lack of cre creativity, and focus to attract investments into infrastructure development. Low priority given to trade-related infrastructure. Funding is also poor. And when Nigeria has relied on borrowing, proceeds have not been allocated to infrastructure projects that will expand the economy. Again, the relevant ministries need to come together to get this sorted out. Some large companies have started using palm kernel shells, PKS, as a source of energy. And I must say, the, it has been successful. It divides the private sector to scale up this alternative source of energy for industrial use. The representative of UNIDO talked about standards. I will talk briefly. I will expand on what it talked about. When you talk about standards, we're talking about quality or standard infrastructure. So when you talk about standard infrastructure, it's not about you have the, the hard infrastructure, you have the soft infrastructure, you have a digital. Apart from a very low manufacturing value at base, the major problem with Nigeria's export of non-oil commodities and competitiveness is standards. Poor compliance with phytosanitary measures has caused Nigeria to have one of the highest levels of rejects of agricultural produce exposed to Europe and the United States. This results from the excessive use of agrochemicals that exceed the maximum residual level permitted, the use of banned agrochemicals, and the presence of aflatoxin in agricultural commodities. I must say that this is also a local consumer protection issue. As sanitary and phytosanitary measures are there to protect human beings, animals, plants from disease, pests, and contaminations. Again, we commenced a project to build the quality infrastructure nine years ago, working with UNINDO and funded, funded by the European Union. There has been some progress, but we need to accelerate its completion to protect Nigeria markets from cheap and substandard goods and to improve Nigeria's competitiveness. The president of man talked about finance. He talked about access to finance. I am going to talk about availability and access to finance. Because the problem is not just access to affordable finance. Finance is insufficient. And the cost of funds in Nigeria is high. It's double. Two problems. Typically between 15 and 20%. Also, available tenors on credit facilities are too short and cannot be used for long-term competitive businesses. The short-term facilities in Nigeria are best suited for trading. There is no access to development finance, including risk capital. And yet, the country needs about $1.5 trillion over 10 years to close its current infrastructure deficit. There's also a shortage of dollars for the importation of intermediate raw materials and machinery for manufacturers. This cost is also higher due to the exchange rate. If not well managed, this could lead to the collapse of some industries and scarcity of products. The country's development financial institutions, such as the Development Bank of Nigeria, the Bank of Industry, the Bank of Agriculture, and Nixon, are grossly undercapitalized and need assistance to source cheap funds for external sources. We commenced the process, that process for BOI in 2013, which included getting BOI credit rated so that it can access cheap funds from the international sources. But the bank needs, I am delighted, 
that today, BOI has been able to raise funds from external sources. However, I must quickly add that the bank and other development institutions need to do far much more to meet the needs of manufacturers. Because a study that was, was undertaken a few years ago showed that the total, total loans made by BOI, for example, since its inception was significantly less than the annual demand by manufacturers. And that's why I'm stressing on availability. I, to make the point again, the total, total amount of loans that BOI has given out, total, for years, more than 12, 15 years, whatever, is less than the demand, the request of manufacturers for one year. That tells you that there's a significant gap in terms of availability of funds. And of course, that will affect the cost of finance and capital. So if you do not realize it, you cannot solve that problem. Now, there are creative solutions in the NRP document, which includes the creation of an industrial an investment company I've heard about a bank for manufacturers, but there are reasons why that will not work. I can engage you on that later. But there was something about the industrial investment company and how it works is in that document. And a comprehensive review of the financing value chain to remove the constraints that are making the cost of capital high. You need to do, we did that work, by the way. It was there, I don't think, Unfortunately, um, I think it's still there. Um, to support exporters who have to import intermediate raw materials and machinery, a dedicated fund can be established, which is funded from the proceeds of a dollar bond issued by the FGN, which has a moratorium of about four to five years, with a bullet payment of capital and interest in the fifth year. This will support confirmed letters of credit with exporters paying back from the process of export. The details can be worked out. I'm saying that there are creative ways to solve the problems we have. You just need to bring heads together to get them resolved. I'm just trained one or two ideas here which you can build on, but these are solutions are possible. Now, economic institutions and agencies must be held accountable in the new agenda you want to have. This is because, ladies and gentlemen, nations fail because institutions are weak or do not exist. That is why nations fail. Any industrial plan will fail if the relevant economic institutions are weak. Look at all the economic institutions that are supposed to support you. They are weak. And some of them, they cannot support you. Nations fail when institutions are weak or do not exist. Therefore, any industrial plan will fail if your economic institutions are weak or do not exist. Government agencies are economic institutions and the implementing arm of the ministries and are therefore critical to any industrialization plan. At a minimum, I see that there are a lot of appointments going on now, but at a minimum, Competent technocrats who have a reputation for delivering should be appointed to the boards and management of these agencies. The dividends of democracy should not be about sharing portfolios, positions to party faithfuls. It should be about good governance. 
for as long as we continue to allocate, appoint EDs and GDs based on the fact that they are faithful party members, our institutions will continue to be weak and you will continue to fail. We have to practice politics the way they are practiced anywhere in countries that want to succeed. We should never say politics as a way where we're going to make money. And when you go into politics, you go to serve. It is not a business venture. If you want to make money, you go to the private sector and go and set up businesses and make money there. But in government, you go to government to serve. Until we change our paradigm as a nation, we will continue to underperform. And I want to make it clear to you that you have a duty and responsibility to make sure that your economic agents that serve you perform. The government needs to know. KPIs should be set and a comprehensive review of their performance regularly undertaken before any reappointments. Full implementation of the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance in the public sector will have a dramatic and positive effect on our economic institutions. I'm happy the EG, DG of the FRCN is here. Um, we developed that Code of Corporate Governance, and the idea was for it to apply to the private sector, the public sector, and to the non-profit sector. It's working effectively in the private sector. It has not been implemented. My excitement was in the public sector. Now, there are laws the National Assembly needs to put in place. You must make sure that it is implemented in the public sector. If you do, e.g., you will make a name for yourself. That's what needs to be done in the private sector, and we have I say if it's implemented in the public sector, it will help strengthen those institutions that I'm talking about, and we have a better chance of success as a nation. The other point I want to also talk about is about market assets and local patronage. They are key components of any plan you put in place. Nigeria must work towards consuming what it produces and producing what Nigerians consume. Simple. Otherwise, with the African continental free trade area in place, Nigeria will be flooded with cheaper and substandard goods. We must not deceive ourselves. Nigeria is the target market for other African countries. There's no point deceiving that. I know investors that are already setting up in different neighboring countries, and they're setting up the hair. It's easier and quicker. Business environment is better for them. But the countries they want to set, the country they want to settle is Nigeria. They will flood you, and you will be dead. Sorry to, use, to be so frank and direct with you. That is what is going to happen. You invited me to speak, so I assume you expect me to say the truth. There are local patronage policies in Nigeria, some backed by law. But you know what the problem is? Even though they are backed by law, passed by FEC and passed by the National Assembly, but the problem has always been that of non-compliance. And by who? By the government and the National Assembly. These are the, when there are policies, policies go to the fact, this is the highest authority in the country making laws and it's passed there. But when it comes to implementation, it's not done. So it is important that effective, so don't deceive yourself about making an ingredient. It's so simple. You know, if there are, it's important that effective processes for monitoring compliance are in place, but it's not enough to monitor it. There are mostly procedures there to ensure that there are severe consequences for non-compliance. 
and the National Assembly and the executive arm of government must set the right example. There's also a need to empower the consumers in particular. Brazil did a brilliant job in this uh, group of consumers, the middle class, which is one of the largest and fastest growing in the world. This is a strong and big consumer group that we must leverage on, ensuring that Nigerians are gainfully employed that Nigerians are paid living, not minimum wage, living wages. And that consumer credit schemes for made in Nigerian products are readily available. It was so depressing when I visited some factories that, part, that partly funded their operations with bank loans, but were unable to sell their products the store, they use a bank loan for the right thing. The store was full of products. They took me to see their stores, but there were no buyers. Not because they were not needed. There were no buyers because the consumers had no money. Meanwhile, the company debt was piling up. Man noted a 20 to 30% decrease in sales of consumer goods in Q2 2023 in the CEO confidence index. One, one minor point I want to make is that also we have a taste as a nation, we have a taste for foreign goods. I remember visiting a factory some time ago and um, I saw these products there. One batch of products were labeled made in Spain and the other was labeled made in Nigeria. And, I, and they're the same products. And I said, why is made in, what is made in Spain doing here? And they said, well, made in Spain ones sell quicker and at a premium because it has label made in Spain. But they are the same products. So we Nigerians also have a job to do on ourselves. There's also a need to empower uh, uh, the consumer groups. I think I've talked about that. And then the final, I want to talk education, investing in education and skills. Emphasis on education and vocational training to ensure skilled workforce that can adapt to emerging and evolving industries is a necessary prerequisite for competitiveness. This will require the review of school curricula to ensure that they produce graduates and skilled workers that are relevant to the economy. Germany, Brazil, Singapore, and China have been successful than most countries in producing skilled workforce. Thank you very much, Egon. In producing skilled workforce. You didn't know I was going to talk for this long, did you? Now, one of the reasons why Singapore, Brazil, Pakistan have, been, have done better in terms of producing skilled workforce is because of this annual skills gap survey which they undertake, which means that the training is demand-driven. And therefore, when you go to one of the institutes in, in, in Brazil, Sinai, for example, 90% uh, of them get jobs within three months of completing the training because the training is demand-driven based on the National Skills Gap Survey. We try to do something similar with UNIDO. The UNIDO person, is still here? We did, yeah, are you still here? We did it, UNIDO and MB, I don't know whether it was before your time, Patrick was here then, and MBS. And the idea was to use it in secondary schools, in universities, and ITF and others, with ITF doing it. Um, I know the report was completed. I will encourage us to use it the way it was supposed to be used. It's still there. Innovation, technology, and transfer, uh, innovation, technology, and research. Innovation is a differentiator. The triple helix model advocated in the NROP 
links research in academia and research in institutes with the industry. But Nigeria has no mirrors. We have no mirrors research institutes. I know that because as Minister of Finance, I knew where the money was going to. We have numerous research across various fields. But they have had little or no impact on national development, and in particular, on our industrial development. We do have an institute called the Raw Materials Institute. Over there. How, what impact have they had on manufacturers and industry? I remember watching a clip on television where the DJ was interviewed, and he was talking about manufacturing plans for Quilly Quilly or something of the sort. Go through those, and this is the point I'm making about the institutions. So we have, we, have, we have many of them. Many of the research institutes are not managed by competent professionals. They are underfunded and have strayed away from their mandates. Nigeria must address these matters and also actively seek technology transfer through joint ventures and partnership with foreign companies and investors. Now, you've heard from the president of MAN, you've heard from different people, and you've heard what I've said. Yes, the current business environment is daunting and extremely difficult for any country to industrialize, let alone talk about wanting to be competitive. But I want to remind you that Malaysia, Indonesia, and even China were worse than this before. Before they all embraced on their industrialization program. And look at what they have achieved today. If they can do it, Nigeria can certainly do it and do it better and quicker. After all, in the 1950s and 1960s, before the advent of oil and gas exports, Nigeria exported more tonnage of manufactured, manufactured good products to the United Kingdom than any of what became the Asian Tigers, according to the UK shipping data. So we have done it before. There's no reason why we cannot do it again. All we need is a robust agenda, total commitment from the government, and industry, and continuity. But man has a role to play. You have a role to play. Like all similar associations in the world, man, too, has some work to do in setting up and implementing this important agenda. I've expanded in, this, in that in the full text which I have presented to you. But in this, let me mention just a few here. Man has made a lot of progress over the years. There's no doubt about that. But we still want a man which is with a bigger presence and a bigger voice. It is important to always speak with one voice. Our prosperity as a nation depends largely on you and your members. I don't think you understand how important you are. You don't, you don't, you come to us in government, you plead, you beg, you, you shouldn't be pleading and begging, for God's sake. You, you, Our, nation, our prosperity as a nation depends or likely on you and your members. You have the muzzle and you have the power not only to speak, but you have the muzzle and the power to speak and to be heard. Look, in some countries, I think Austria was one of those countries. In some countries, no economic or industrial policy can be introduced by any government without the support of the industrial association. 
When are you going to get there? You need to walk your way there. Walk into a room with your head high. Demand and ask for something. And you will get it. You see, I hope you still remember. And I think uh, Chief Kola Jamodi will remember this. I hope you still remember the role you played in changing the name of the Ministry of Industry, Trade, and Investment. You, you may have forgotten, but I'll remind you. That ministry was called Commerce and Industry. And at the time, you had two ministers, one for Commerce, one for Industry. When I left finance and came in, I saw that I left finance. I was chairman of the economic management team as Minister of Finance. But I knew that in the heart, the economy, the number one ministry for economy in Nigeria is the Ministry of Industry, Trade, and Investment. But they were reading speeches. And I wanted to go there and work. Now, we changed the name to Ministry of Trade and Investment. We were at a meeting when your president interjected and said, Mr. President, this ministry is our ministry. Why is our name missing? Why are you changing to the Ministry of Trade and Investment? And the minister said, you're absolutely right. We changed the name to ministry. And he did not only say it should be a ministry, he said industry must come first. And we changed the name to Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment. That is how powerful you can be. You see, there's a time there was complaining about your problems and the customs and everything. You asked, you demanded to be having quarterly meetings with customs with the private sector. We made it happen because you asked for it. You have the muscle, the strength. Walk into a room with your head high and demand. The other point I want to say is that I told you about competitiveness council. You don't have to wait for the government to do it. In other countries, the private sector take the lead. I've asked in the, what I submitted to you that you need to play a role to revitalize it. In advocacy, government, you come to talk to government on different things. And the same issues about all you know, the little, little things you talk about here. Not the bigger things that we, whatever it is. I think that you need to expand. You now need to broaden the scope of your engagement with government to cover areas that have an impact on competitiveness, economic growth, and investment. They're all listed there. You need to expand the areas you cover. And I think you should see yourself as core development partners with governments. Make sure, I have said that man and the private sector should play a leading role in the new Council for Industrial Revitalization and co-manage the development of the plan and implementation. That will allow for continuity. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I must commend the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for setting up the Presidential Council on Industrial Revitalization. It is an important and a very big step in the right direction. But I must say, and as I said earlier, Nigeria's problem is not about plans but about the quality of implementation and more importantly, continuity. Any plan that does not adequately address these two big areas is bound to fail. I would like to take this opportunity to make a special appeal to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that this is a time to be bold. It is a time to act. It is a time to declare the industrial sector or manufacturing sector a national priority.
and back it with plans, policies, and money. Why does the president need to drive this and make this happen? It is because history has shown that industry multiplies national wealth. Industry creates jobs. Industry is critical for exchange rate and balance of payment management and will make the Naira stronger. Tell me, what is the wisdom in spending billions defending the Naira when it continues to fall instead of investing in genuine manufacturers and exporters? These are the people that will produce high value products and this is the group of people that will earn Nigeria foreign income that you need to stabilize the Naira. After all, we all know that the Naira will continue to fall. The Naira will continue to be weak if Nigeria remains an import dependent country and does not produce for local consumption and more importantly for export the Nigeria will continue, the Naira will continue to be weak. There's no, it's, it's very simple to link those two together. If Nigeria remains an import dependent country, does not produce locally, and does not export to generate enough sufficient foreign income, our Naira will continue to depreciate. That is why our posterity as a nation depends on you and your members. That's the way to look at it. Not the profit you want to make. You are important for the nation, for the prosperity of the nation as a whole. You see, the, unlike the trillions, unlike the trillions spent on subsidies, bailouts, the Anchor Borrowers Program. A lot of money has gone into the Anchor Borrowers Program. How much of that has been recovered? Why is food inflation still at 37% with the amount of loans that are made available? Why are there no parties for rice processors? We need to be, look at when money is a limited factor, we need to apply it appropriately in the rice sector. I'm saying an investment in manufacturers is better, is a better investment than where we have spent money in the past. I assure you, Mr. President, that every Naira, no matter how large is it, if it's well spent on strategic industrial sectors, it, they can be easily recovered and will deliver tremendous benefits to the economy and the nation. Every successful nation has had to do this on their journey to prosperity. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, embracing competitive manufacturing under the African and continental free trade area is crucial for Nigeria's economic growth and integration into the global marketplace. Nigeria may not be able to compete with China today, but by investing in infrastructure, innovation, and skilled labor, while addressing trade barriers, the business environment, and promoting market access, Nigeria can certainly position itself as a manufacturing hub in Africa. We must continuously monitor and evaluate our progress and making necessary adjustments along the way. The road to competitive manufacturing under the African continental free trade area may be challenging, but with dedication, with determination, and adaptability, we can pave the way for a thriving Nigerian manufacturing sector and prosperous nation. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, Please allow me to end with this quote from the Reclaiming the Jewel of Africa. And here's a quote. History 
shows that no country has ever become rich by exporting raw materials without having a competitive industrial sector. And in modern terms, an advanced services sector. The more a country specializes in, produ in production of raw materials only and becomes import dependent, the poorer it becomes. Industry multiplies national wealth. To become a prosperous nation with a strong Naira and to reclaim the position, its position as the jewel of Africa, Nigeria must industrialize. Nigeria has no choice. It is now or later, but there's no better time than now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Wow, thank you so much. Please keep the applause coming. Thank you so much, sir. And to think that while his profile was read, we didn't see that he's also a quintessential lecturer because that was indeed a brilliant paper. Please, a round of applause for him once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, we'll move to the next item, which is uh, taking questions um, or comments that you would like to make after this presentation. But one thing we should note is that our time is fast spent. So if you are giving the mic to ask question, please save us the opportunity of thanking the speaker or appreciating him because there are a series of things we will do to appreciate him and thank him. Just go straight to your comment or your question. And do well to introduce yourself by mentioning your name and the organization you represent. Thank you. I see the cameramen are taking advantage of our celebrity speaker. Can we do that very quickly so we move on to all the items of the program? Okay, so let's take numbers. If you'd like to ask questions, could you raise up your hand so we save time? Okay, we have number one. We're only taking five questions. That's the maximum. Number two, ma. Number three. So we have two more. Number three and number four. Just one more person and we're done. Number five. Thank you so much. We're done with the five questions. I don't have the mic. So we're done taking all the questions. We just have five people. There's no mic here. Ooh. All right, please let's take our seats. And I have the honor of recognizing the representative of the DG RMRDC uh, present here. Please put your hands together for. Uh, Mrs. Olabisi Davis. A round of applause for Mrs. Olabisi Davis. She's the Director of Planning and Policy Development Department. Please, a round of applause for her. Are we together? Thank you so much from RMRDC. And please, let's have our seats. Thank you. The program is still on. Uh, we have quite a lot of activities to, to do. Also, joining uh, Mrs. Olabisi is a director from RMRDC as well, Mr. A. Colliery. Thank you so much. A round of applause for Mr. Colliery. Thank you so much from RMRDC. Can I join you to urge them to their seats? Yes. Uh, distinguished guests, I would like to urge all of us to please uh, let us sit. There will be enough time for us to interact with the distinguished guest speaker. I uh, will need to move on now because many people will still be traveling today. So please, uh, thank you very much. Our photographers, you have been very gallant. You can rest now. You can rest now. Yes, please, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, DG. Let's kindly move on. And uh, we have the presence of a former uh, BOIMD, Dr. Wahid Olagunju. Thank you, it's a pleasure having you 
at this event. He's also founder CEO, WVL Development Limited. Thank you for joining us. So we take questions now. Can we have number one? Yes, number one is uh, Engineer Onyebo. So we're sticking to five. Once we ask all those five, please, your name, the organization you represent, and straight to your question. One, the speaker has been thanked, and he will still be thanked. Thank you. Hello? 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 It's working, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, my name is Engineer Frank Onyebu, Universal Luggage Industry Limited. Thank you. I, I know you say we should, I still need to commend the guest speaker for breaking down this speech to make it so comprehensible to everybody. And um, I feel very delighted to be here, and I also feel sad, because most often than not, we hear these lectures, beautiful lectures, excellent lectures, and they end there. My question is, why is it so difficult for the government to, both now and before, to comprehend these words and act on them? All right. Why is it so impossible for the government to realize that it's in our collective interest to make the industrial sector a priority, just like uh, our guest lecturer has uh, recommended? And my second question is, if the government is unwilling or unable to do this, what can manufacturers themselves do to bring about the desired industrial re re revolution. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Brilliant. So let's take a cue from Engineer Oyebu. Uh, go to our number two. That's uh, Mrs. Olabisi, is number two. Distracted. Okay. Okay. Can I take this question once again? I want to commend the, the guest lecturer for a beautiful lecture and for breaking it down to make it so easy for all to understand. And uh, my question is, why is it so difficult for the government to actually comprehend this to, and act on it to make the industrial sector a priority, just like he has recommended? And then, if the government is unwilling or unable to do this, what can manufacturers themselves do to bring about this industrial revolution, which we have all been talking about for so long. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Engineer Oyebu. Please, number two, uh, the rep of DG RMRDC. So I think you are number three. We'll come to you. The rep of DG RMRDC is number two, please. Thank you. Um, I stand on existing protocols. I would like to thank uh, particularly the guest speaker. The Honorable Minister, former Minister uh, Finance, I'm making a comment and not a question. All right. Man. I was so impressed when I saw the what we were given, as in the paper, very detailed, and I had to be going through to see how we can actually what we can learn and how we can move forward. Like it's been said, I am from Raw Materials Research and Development Council, and I represent um, the Director General. Um, quite a lot has been said, okay. and I want to believe that uh, with what we have heard today, we are on the right track. All right. And um, I know that uh, my organization was mentioned it would not be nice not to say. <laughs> yes, I know, I'm just saying. No, my organization was mentioned. And uh, I just want to clear a few issues. The Honorable Minister said something about Kilishi. Uh, was it? No, not Kilishi now. Kuli Kuli. And I just want to say that is just one of the programs that the council does. We have upgrading of indigenous technologies. And you will find that that will come under that. You know, we have things like Kilishi, things that we cannot, we want to see, even share butter. Things that we want to see the indigenous people, the indigenous technologies, how they can be upgraded so that it will save time and it will be what we want also. Right. And that's why we run some of those programs. 
I want to invite the Honorable Minister, maybe once, maybe when it comes to Abuja one of these days, he will be able to see some of the things that the council has also been able to do. Like, uh, we have a technology complex, we have some issues, some programs that we have done. And I just want to say that the council has actually done a lot. And that program is just one of it. We have so many other programs that we do a lot on. And with that, I appreciate you. I appreciate the Manufacturers Association and I appreciate the Honorable Minister. Thank, Thank you. you so much for clearing the air. So we take uh, the next question. Um, standing on all existing protocols, I'd like to ask the former Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. Your name, sir, and your organization. Yes, my name is Haman Kwajafa, Director General of Nigerian Textile Manufacturers Association. All right, sir. So I've always known the minister as a bureaucrat. I didn't know he's that scholarly. So today, I want to ask him on scholarly issues and to mild down the ministerial position. As a minister, sir, when you are launching the cotton textile garment policy, you told us if we didn't vote PDP, we should forget about this implementation of this policy that we should forget the implementation of this policy. Today, you have brought up the issue of politics, actually, that most people look at politics without the economy when they, are, when they are appointed in positions. Now, you have mentioned other countries, how they have succeeded. Why can't the OPS be represented at the Federal Executive Council? What is, why are, you, are they shaving our heads in our absence? That man, cannot be represented and be able to talk. Just like you have said, that the industry players should not shy away from demanding what they require. So why can't the government put the OPS to represent the whole OPS on the Federal Executive Council so that things can work out well? All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. We have the next hand behind. After him is Alaji. Yourself, sir. <laughs> yeah, my name is Kabir Musa Adamu from BBR Super Sax Limited, Kano. My question to the speaker we, from all the uh, lecture that he gave, it seems that we have a good and bad picture of, of what is going on in our country. And again, this government is coming with uh, different, different policies that are coming recently, one after the other, one after the other. But there's one policy that just came recently, which I want to, the speaker to explain to manufacturers, is it good or bad to the manufacturer? Before, the previous government banned for three items from assessing dollar. And still, with that banning, the, the manufacturers are not getting enough dollar to source raw materials and machineries. And again, now, this government reintroduced that for three items to go out and be eligible to access the dollar. Is it good or bad to manufacturers? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Let's have um, um, staff Kamarudi Yusuf. Thank you, sir. Are we in the morning or afternoon? <laughs> Why in the afternoon, sir? OK, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> good afternoon. My name is Dr. Yusuf Kamaru, MON. I'm the founder of Cam Odin. I have all the pleasure to speak today because the, the author is on the stage. The man who drives me. He and the former coordinating minister of economy. Today, my company is the second biggest of the producer of the iron and steel in Nigeria today with advanced technology. I want to speak on behalf of the other manufacturer, people that have concern on the reversal of the 43's policies. The author, unfortunately to be the part of the team, 
that do the appraisal of the 43 items in 2015. And our author is on the stage. All the deputy governor, CBN, CBN governor, the ministries, the permanent secretaries. I believe the present people that are reversing that policy does not go through the right of behind on that policy before they reverse it. About almost 12 attempts, or let's say 10, in that concern the basic matter, I don't understand. Is in that policy. What is going to happen to us? They want this thing industry to die totally. I can tell you, the what keeping pressure on our foreign exchange today is not that a result of demand from CBN. CBN doesn't have to give. It doesn't have. And what CBN doesn't have? Can give. You can't push people in the market. In the black market to black market to go to CBN. If they go there, they can't find. What's behind of that problem is free trade zone. At least many more of us who come from Asia country. I don't want to mention country here specifically to the country. And the items are not on those first vessels. If a man statistically went to go and do this research, they will come out with a good result. They will come up with the result. The item comes to the country is around 500 million dollars in every month. 60 percent of that item came to to uh, came to to, uh, to free trade zone without duties, no tax, and all the items is finished goods, not raw material to put anything there. What is the investment value of all the people in the free trade zone, apart from the people that do ties? That got in all our mat mater raw materials locally and do ties. All the items in free trade zone, they are all finished goods. No, no follow addition, no duty, no tax, nothing. Even the agency in charge of con uh, quality control, they cannot go there to go and assess what they bring. The whole market, I mean, the whole goods, the finished will end up in the Nigeria market, not export to the neighboring the countries. These are the people that went to the Nigeria market. To go and buy the dollars at any rate because they are getting export proceed, export incentive in their country. Please, we want our author, our amiable leader who has the visions. Because I know when he was in the Ministry of Trade and Investment. They are putting KPMG to write to do the right of all what they are implementing. I know very well I was involved, but if that policy is going to kill Nigeria if we are not we are not careful. I'm sorry to use that word. It's a bad policy yeah. by reversing it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. And that would be the end of questions. So, sir, you can uh, field responses to those questions. Sorry, uh, thank you very much. I will take some of the questions. Um, but first of all, um, the raw material lady. Um, you know, I didn't know you were here. If I knew, I wouldn't have mentioned. <laughs> because I value my protection from I don't have people around me to protect me anymore now. Um, I came alone. I didn't have police people around me. So, um, but, but, the, the, I would, but, but I like your candid opinion. Not to worry, I know I'm safe with you, don't worry. I like your candid opinion, and, and all I'm saying is that we have to be honest with ourselves as a country. We have quite a large number of institutions. We fund them with taxpayers' money. They must be accountable to the taxpayers, and they must produce for the taxpayers. That's the point I'm making. And if you look at the institutions, they have not been delivering. We must, and that's partly because of the way we see appointments. I've made the point that democracy or, or, or is, is, a, is about good governance, not about sharing positions to party faithfuls. And that is partly why we have the problem we have today. Now, um, and that example I gave, which on the television, which your DG actually, is, it was relayed live. I also make my comments because even when I was in finance, I did meet with the DG then, those days, 
And I kept on, I wasn't as impressed at this stage, they were even competing with the industry, producing what the industry should be producing. When their job is to help facilitate, there was a misunderstanding, they were strain away from their, from their mandate. And it doesn't apply to raw materials only, it applies to all the uh, um, implementing agencies. And that was the point I was making. On the point, the first comment was about why has it been difficult for government to react that you normally have brilliant, good uh, lectures, but after it, nothing happens. You must adopt the fact that you must walk the talk. This is now the time for action, not talk. And that's what I'm trying to get on to, to act on now. And this should not end with this. There should be a forum to discuss it and come up with an action plan. And I think that is what man is trying to do. After this event, I think they will come with an action plan which they will go and present to the president. So that's part of the plan, and that will make things happen. Because part of the things that sometimes the sector assume that the government knows everything. We don't know everything. We don't even know most things. You are the people on the field. You know what is going on there. It's important that you engage honestly with government and share your thoughts with government. It's usually very helpful. What has been confusing in the past, which I think has improved, in those days, uh, the people, uh, the personal interest was, was far much more. There was no, and that's why I made a point, that you need to speak with one voice. You must have a credible platform. Man should be the platform. And you should talk through, uh, uh, the one, with one strong, big voice. And they must know the power, and you don't, you don't I don't think the government also understands how powerful you are. You have not demonstrated and shown how powerful you are. You need to, you have more than 2,500 people. If you look at it and see the number of them, the taxes that your members pay to the government, you aggregate some of these things regularly to your government to remind government how important you are to the economy, the government will take it more seriously. And you are not promoting yourself, I think, enough to show what your contribution is to the nation. And, and, and I think that's part of what you do. The second point is that you have to, which I wrote in the book, I, I think part of it is to do with the, quality, the governance we operate in this country. You see, because we don't operate the parliamentary system, we operate the presidential system, people are appointed, you have someone appointed to, to tomorrow into a position that he or she never thought she was going to occupy at all. It's made a minister tomorrow, whatever it is, you may not understand, it takes more than a year for a new minister to understand what his ministry does and the agencies do. It takes more than a year to understand that. The ministry, the minister second, starts developing his own plan in the second year. It's in the third year that you start seeing some level of implementation. And in the fourth year, it's all about election. So we run a, a system that is not productive for our country. And so you, as man, should be the custodian of what is happening in the industry so that when a new minister comes in, a new DG comes in, you are able to bring them up to speed so they know. And that's why I, I proposed here, it's not in what you have, I proposed here that the new presidential council which the president has just set up, man should be involved in the planning and the implementation and co-managing it. So that even if one government goes, another comes in, you are still there. You are co-chairman, you are co-whatever it is. They just continue. So if you provide some level of continuity, we need a structure that allows continuity. But you need to bring some on some of these. I've, I've said I'm willing to support and assist as much as I can uh, to make this happen. But that, that, that's what has been uh, part of the problem. You talk about man. Uh, why is man not in the Federal Executive Council? Uh, that will require a change of the Constitution. Because it, it did, there's, the Constitution sets out who can be in the Executive Council. And there are government ministers and there are procedures, whatever it is. Man, what man can demand, which man has gotten, is usually in the economic management team, man is represented there. That's where some of the decisions are made. Um, but again, it, it, everything borders on the, and, and the voice, the economic team that I was involved in, uh, the president regards the president of man very, I call the president of man, Mr. President with a small P. 
you know, it's Mr. President, but with a small P. Mr. President with a small P. That, that's the name I call him, you know. Uh, because the, we listen to him, we listen to what you're saying. So I think involvement at that level and making sure you contribute significantly at that level uh, will help and support uh, what you want us to do. On the, the cotton textile garments um, policy, it was one of the last policies that I put in place that we announced. But it was dead after I left. Nothing happened after that. Yeah. Now, and we had a plan. We, we, the, the idea was to link it from cotton to fashion industry from beginning to the end. And, uh, and we had investors who wanted to come in. And we had a policy. I don't know what happened to it after. But again, these are some of the things that you should be reminding the government. If you are co-managers, it will help and go a very long way in everything you do. All I was saying was that continuity was important. Uh, the way you exercise your vote is different. It, it's up to the individual. But the important thing was to have the point I've been making, and which I've made to this new committee, that two things are important. Co continuity is critical, and quality of implementation is critical. If those two things are addressed, uh, most of our problems will be uh, completely uh, uh, most of the issues we raise will be completely addressed. I think that's basically all. My good friend, Cam, who's the second uh, largest producer of iron and steel, he's been very active in the industry, a tough industry, but he's been grain and grain known for a long time. His family, we, we see, we talk regularly, he's on different committees. We involve man members in different committees, and you should be demanding, you should be part of it. That, that's what I think uh, is required. Is there any other question that I have not answered? Sorry? Now, there were two comments about the 43 items. Your question was that, is it good or bad? Is that? That was, am I correct? It depends on which side you are. I'm not talking like a politician. Um, you see, the CBA, that is an example of what could have been done differently if there was better coordination between monetary and fiscal policy. What you saw was a decision that was based only on monetary. You see, it shouldn't have. For it to work, you need monetary and fiscal working together with the industry trade and investment heavily involved in it. They were not involved in it. And it was mainly CBN trying to conserve the foreign exchange. But the problem the industry had was that, from what I understand from those I spoke to, was that even with that, it induced, they had to go to the black market. It increased the exchange rate. But more importantly, there was no level playing ground for everyone. That if it was level playing for everyone, they'd be okay. But you know what was happening. I know what is happening, and this is not a forum to discuss it. But there are issues around the process itself that made it very difficult. But it's the, it, it was causing a problem in terms of the exchange rate because they, they had to source it. And you knew they were importing it. It was coming into the country. They had to source money to get it. So they were going to the other market uh, to get their foreign exchange. It was, the price was higher. They were smuggling in and all those sorts of things to make it easy.
the rep of the governor should remain. Members of the ESCO of man. Oh, sorry, sir. So, sorry. Sorry. Yes, sir. All right, you can pick a copy. This book is one that you should get. Rich history, rich content, fantastic information. And it is quite affordable. You won't believe how much it is. All right, great. Then we'll take a final one where the Minister Otumba, the rep of the Lagos State Government, the DG RMRDC rep, should please come forward. While other ESCO members can go to their seats, we will send the bill to you. Just have it. ESCO members can have it. We'll send the bill. We'll send the bill to you. Thank you very much. All right, so the rep of DG RMRDC should join them upstage. Just wait, she will join you. Yes, that's the final photo session we'll have. Okay, the rep of DG RMRDC. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Please let's have our seats and we will just take the opportunity to have uh, His Excellency. Yes, we will send the bill to you. <laughs> Please have it. You can pick more than one if you want. We will send the bill to you. <laughs> All right, please let's kindly settle down. The program is not over yet. No, it's fine. It's down here. We'll call it later. No, down. All right. Thank you. Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Dr. Rabiu Olowo. A round of applause for Dr. Rabiu as it comes forward. Please, one house. Can we put our hands together for Dr. Rabi Olowo? Thank you so much. Please, can we settle down and please put our hands together for Dr. Olowo? Thank you. The Governor of Lagos State, Mr. Babajide Olushola Sonwolu, ably represented here by the Honorable Commissioner for Commerce and Cooperatives, Mrs. Folashade Ambrose Medem. The President of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Otumba Francis Meshue, and all the past presidents of the manufacturer, uh, former Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, and our guest speaker, Honorable Olushegun Aganga, also former Minister of Finance, Your Excellency, the former Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, Otumba Niyi Adebayo. I use this opportunity to greet all our bilateral and multilateral agencies here present. Um, our past presidents, traditional rulers, managing directors, and DGs of private and public institutions here present. 
Uh, I think today's event gives a very, very compelling and insightful uh, atmosphere into the issues, the pressing issues of industry and manufacturing in this country. Especially after listening to the guest speaker today, drawing from all those issues and bringing profound solutions into all the matters that we have talked about today. I feel very, very honored and privileged to be um, here, including fiscal and monetary policy alignment. But most importantly, like, like it has been said here, the continuous engagement with the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria will be a key element in delivering this presidential initiative. I also heard things around the improvement opportunity that is present in ensuring that our manufacturing contribution to GDP increases over the years. The guest speaker also made mention of the need for active collaboration between man and the government. And I want to assure you here today that the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment is very ready to work with man with a open hand actively and we are waiting for active engagement that will lead to the resuscitation of this industry. Uh, I also heard things around development of MSMEs, uh, industrial infrastructure around roads and electricity, access to finance and high cost. So this tells you that when we go back, we're going back with insight that has been uh, delivered in this uh, occasion today and the government uh, with my presence here representing the president and the minister we will take active steps in ensuring that all these are looked into with serious uh, consideration. Distinguished members of the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria and esteemed guests here, our goal today from the government is to discuss the pivotal role of Nigeria in enhancing the manufacturer's uh, competitiveness in Nigeria. Nigeria, as we all know, is the most populous nation on the African continent and its largest economy. So it plays a crucial role, especially when we talk about the African continental free trade area and agreement. Our presence here today at this meeting will emphasize the need to compose ourselves and get ready to take advantage of the AFCFTA uh, agreement. The AFCFTA represents a transformative development in African economic integration. Uh, as of September 2021, it has the potential to create a single market. Take advantage. Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. The AFCFTA offers unparalleled prospects for growth and trade expansion. However, to announce the full benefits of its historic agreement, we must take strategic interventions in the, in the manufacturing sector to enhance uh, our competitive edge. Like the guest speaker also said, the manufacturing sector is the backbone of any industrial economy, and we know this as a government. It plays a crucial role in employment generation, value addition, and of course, technology transfer. To maximize the opportunities presented by AFCFTA, we have four critical imperatives to share with you, which is a combined responsibility of the government and also the Manufacturing uh, Association of Nigeria. So I'll go over it one after the other. The first one is how do we foster collaboration and partnerships? The FCSA is not just an agreement. It is a platform for collaboration, even beyond the walls of Nigeria. How do we reach for regional integration that will give us competitive manufacturing. Nigeria must actively engage in regional and continental cooperation with the following steps. The steps that will bolster regional integration, we must strengthen our commitment to regional integration by harmonizing trade and manufacturing policies with other AFCFTA state parties. The second one within this is public-private partnership. We must encourage a robust public-private partnerships to enhance the strength of both sectors. The private sectors cannot do it alone, and government is showing willingness to listen to you. You are the expert. You've been doing this for long. I will be willing to work with you 
in order to uh, deliver sustainable growth, especially in the area of research and development. Uh, the third one here is support for exporting SMEs. That is, SMEs that have capacity and potential for export. The government is giving uh, its commitment to say that we will continue to support SMEs and create the financial mechanisms to provide technical assistance to enable them meet international quality and safety standards. Investment in infrastructure and technologies. This came out of the speech of the president of MAN and also the guest speaker. Uh, in, infrastructure and technology play pivotal role in the manufacturing sector's competitiveness. Whether you talk about electricity, or you talk about road, or you talk about you know, industries, we have to upgrade our infrastructure and we have to promote technology adoption. Manufacturers should be encouraged to adopt advanced manufacturing technology that offers competitiveness, that promotes automation, uh, uh, you know, including artificial intelligence, data analytics, etc. This will enhance productivity, quality, and innovation. One other very important thing here is how do we enhance uh, quality standards and compliance? It is not just enough for us to see ourselves as the most populous uh, uh, black country, but what comes, you know, what is the quality of our outcomes? What is the quality of our output? I think this is very, very important. One of the most critical aspects of competitive manufacturing is adhering to international quality standards. We must work together to address this challenge by strengthening regulatory frameworks, by ensuring that our institutions that are responsible for quality adherence uh, are up to the tax. Capacity building is also very important, and also quality certifications are the things that we need to take even much more seriously. The fourth, and what seems to be the most important, is investment in research and development. To stay competitive, we must continuously innovate and improve our manufacturing processes and product offerings. Research and development is key to achieving this goal. If I ask the question, how much of R&D do we do, I, I, I think it's very obvious that we all know the answer. And this is our responsibility as manufacturers, and the government is also willing to support uh, the establishment of R&D uh, centers. Manufacturers should be encouraged, and our government will encourage you in creating specialized research and development centers. And uh, one way of encouraging you is to offer incentives, whether it's tax, government is willing to provide tax incentives and grants for companies that are willing to invest in research and development. I thought you would clap. <laughs> Our commitment in supporting you in the area of research and development, I must emphasize, it is not rhetoric. Like some of the insight that I've gotten sitting down here, manufacturing is at the bedrock of a sustainable economic development in this country. And we are not going to achieve that growth if we don't have a sustainable pipeline for innovation and attractive production. So we go back to the AFCFTA. Significantly, we stand at a crossroad in the implementation of the AFCFTA, especially with our potential and the opportunity that we see as a big country. The manufacturing sector is pivotal in realizing the full potential of this historic agreement. We must take opportunity for it, and we must get a big deal out of this. Furthermore, it is crucial for the manufacturers to promote regional value chains and industrial clusters, particularly with ongoing efforts to join the second phase of the Guided Trade Initiative by Nigeria AFCFTA Coordination Office. By encouraging manufacturing enterprises, man and the private sector, we can overcome the challenges and seize opportunities of the AFCFTA offers. Together, we can ensure that Nigeria's manufacturing sector not only thrives under the new trade dynamics, but becomes a global 
benchmark for prosperous future for our nation and contribute to the growth and integration of not just Nigeria, but the African continent. I want to mention something very quickly, and it was an insight I jotted from the speech of uh, the guest speaker when he talks about the need for us to have strong institutions, when he talked about the need for us to have corporate governance embedded in the way we do business, of how successful we want to be as an industry or as a sector. I want to speak about corporate governance and my role in the Financial Reporting Council. The Financial Reporting Council, under my watch, will serve the public interest by upholding and holding those account for delivering high standards of corporate governance in private and public institutions, especially the government business entities, in order to deliver sustainable economic growth in Nigeria. My commitment is to transform the Financial Reporting Council into a new, robust, independent regulator of corporate governance and accounting and auditing standards in this country in the interest of the public. And I want to close by saying on behalf of the president and of course the minister, all the outcomes, all the deliberation and notes that have been taken in this particular occasion should be forwarded for ongoing engagement. I'll be willing to work with man in order to progress all the points and agenda that we've talked about here today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for uh, that remark. I shouldn't have allowed you to go because the next presentation concerns you. So I'd like to invite the President and uh, Dr. Olowo should also please step forward. You'd be receiving uh, this uh, token of our appreciation from MAN uh, for His Excellency, uh, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please, Mr. President. Yes. Please, can we get a handheld mic for the President? Thank you. We all heard. Let's assume we heard. He simply read what is on the award. So we move on to the next presentation. Thank you so much, sir. I need an usher to help him hold this while he received the second one. And to make the second presentation is a former president of the association. Please put your hands together for Ambassador Hassan. And this would be going to our minister, the Honorable Minister, Federal Ministry, Industry, Trade and Investment. Uh, we just want you to help her receive this uh, token of appreciation. We would have loved her to be here, but due to uh, one or two reasons, she can make it. Honorable Dr. Doris Inkiruka Uzoka Anite. So, Ambassador would be making this presentation to our minister um, while Dr. Olowo receives. So, can we hand it over to Ambassador? Your Excellency, in appreciation of um, your attendance to the 51 AGM, uh, the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria is presenting an award. Um, you are honoring our invitation. Thank you. Please help him hold the mic. Thank you so much, sir. All right, so you can have your seats now. 
Uh, the next presentation, I'd like to invite a former president of this association. Please put your hands together for Chief Kola Jamodu as he steps forward. Is making the next presentation on behalf of the association to our distinguished guest lecturer at this event. It's done amazing, and we, sir, you come up stage, sir. It's done amazing, and we just simply want to appreciate him with this token. Uh, once again, let's put our hands together for Olusha Aganga, CON, former Minister of Finance and former Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment. Please, the applause is getting cold. Could we? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right there. Ganga, Commander of the Niger, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In appreciation of your continued support to the manufacturing sector in this great country, and in particular to the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, this appreciation award is being given to you to foster continuous relationship and to appreciate your continued support, not too late today, but your willing offer of continued relationship and award and support to the manufacturing sector in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. A round of applause for our former president and, of, and our distinguished guest lecturer. Thank you. Uh, the next presentation will be done by another former president of this association, Please put your hands together for Engineer Manso Ahmed as he steps forward. Thank you so much, sir. To make this presentation to our former Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, our very own friend of the house, and of course the man who did the forward for the excellent book we unveiled at today's event. Please a round of applause for Otsumbani Adebayo as he comes to receive a token of appreciation. Can we have the final plug? Yes, please. <laughs> Your Excellency and our former minister and our eternal friend, it's my pleasure on behalf of the Manufacturer Association to hand over this flag to you in appreciation of your continued and long-standing stand uh, support for the association and for the manufacturing industry. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you so much. Please a round of applause for them. And the Director General would make this final presentation. Uh, one of the great things that uh, manufacturers do is to give back to the society. And through the great works you do, um, you have generously donated some exercise book to a school, uh, which we are presenting on your behalf. I'd like to invite the representative of Shogunle Estate Primary School, Ikeja, that's Mrs. Adewale CF, to please come forward. We'll have a copy of the book where the DG will present to Shogunle Primary School. We have quite a number of books for them, but we'll just present a dummy to Mrs. Adewale. Please, Mr. Adewale, thank you. Please, a round of applause for Ms. Adewale as she comes to receive for the Shogunle Primary School. She's coming. Okay, I think the donor company is here. The donor company is here. Please, join us. What we are actually presenting is not only exercise books, but there are story books that we found to be very useful 
uh, to the school because they are just opposite us at our head office in Ikeja. So we are making this presentation. There is quite a lot of it here, but we just present this. Center. Thank you so much. And now the DG can do the vote of thanks. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my job is very easy. And it is to thank all of you immensely for doing us great today by joining us at our 51st annual general meeting. According to Ellen Candy, gratitude helps you to grow and expand. Gratitude brings you joy and laughter. It brings it into your life and into the lives of all those that are around you. Therefore, and on behalf of the President and members of MAN, I would like to specially thank His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, for honoring our invitation to the third Adeola Udutola Lecture as part of activities marking our 51st Annual General Meeting. Clearly, your address has added grandeur to this 51st AGM of man and simply underscored your commitment to the growth and development of manufacturing in Nigeria. We are hopeful that key recommendations offered at this lecture, especially the low-hanging fruits, will be implemented in the early part of your administration. May I pause to kindly request that we keep the noise level low those of us at the back should please allow us just a few minutes to conclude this meeting. Can we please keep the noise level low? Thank you very much for your cooperation. It is evident that the exigencies of your exalted office in these early days in your administration necessitated your being represented here today. We thank you for the high consideration we are gladdened by the gallant and reassuring presentation of the Honorable Minister, which was delivered by our brother, Dr. Rabi Olowo. Mr. President, we look forward to engaging with your administration so that all the issues that has been raised by the distinguished guest speaker will find expression in your early days. As the man president has said, you are a ladder to the president, that's addressing the Honorable Minister now, an ambassador to other ministries, departments, and agencies of government in this administration. To our eminent and distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Olushegun Aganga, C-O-N, I say a big thank you for finding time to share with us your premium knowledge and wealth of experience as a distinguished international transformational economist and a consummate technocrat across the continent of Africa. Your presence, thought-provoking presentation, and valuable recommendations have all added inestimable value to our long-standing industrialization aspirations and will certainly be taken on board the advocacy radar of the association as we partner with the new government. We know that you have traveled all the way from London to be with us today, and we are exceedingly thankful for the honor you have done us. We are grateful to the executive governor of Lagos State. I can hardly recall the last time we had this high-level representation from Lagos State. We commend you, ma'am because we are sure that it is your doggedness and commitment to industrialization in Lagos State that has brought you here. We thank you. 
Our sincere gratitude also goes to our guest of honor and our dear former Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment, His Excellency, Otumbani Yadeba, your CON, with whom we have a long history of friendship and support. We duly acknowledge your past support and thank you immensely for gracing our AGM. To our esteemed members of the Diplomatic Corps and development partners and agencies, earlier acknowledged, we thank you for the cooperation you have always extended to our association and for honoring us with your attendance. To our partners, directors general, and leaders of departments of government, including Raw Material Research and Development Council, Standards Organization of Nigeria, NAVDAC, NEPSA, SMIDAN, NEMASA, ITF, we thank you exceedingly. We applaud you for coming and for the cooperation you have extended to our members, as well as the joint efforts we have undertaken together to improve business operations. Our fellow members of the organized private sector of Nigeria, namely NECA, NASIMA, NASI, and NASMI, we have always enjoyed the pleasure of your company as we deeply appreciate the bond that we share. I have here my colleagues from NECA and NASIMA, you are warmly welcome. We are grateful to members of the academia, our consultants, partners, and so on for joining us. To our past presidents and directors general of this great association present here today, I extend a warm appreciation to you for finding time to attend this third Adeola Odutola lecture and presidential luncheon. We specially acknowledge and thank our beloved former president, Ambassador Hassan Adamu, Chief Kola Jamudu, and Engineer Mansour Ahmed. We are indebted to all our past presidents. We are happy to see our past director generals as well. We have seen Mr. Jide Mike and my predecessor, Chief Remy Ogumefun. It's indeed a pleasure to see you all looking well. I hope I will look as well as you are looking when I leave this job. We thank you for being remarkable and dignified institutional assets to your association. Most importantly, we are grateful for the inestimable legacy that you left for us to build upon. May the road rise up to meet you in all that you do. To our veritable partners in the media space, we thank you for always being there for us and giving us unbiased and supportive reportage. We look forward to no less coverage of the 51st AGM. We remain indebted to our gallant sponsors who made all this possible and colorful. Your continued support has made our AGM a most memorable reunion, and we thank you for being exceptional members and for always making us proud. An event like this takes a lot of careful planning and long hours of work. I'm fortunate to have the cooperation and dedication of colleagues who work tirelessly to make this event possible and memorable. It has been a tasking one, and I thank you all for enduring, for your endurance and for your steadfastness. I would like to express my appreciation to you for keeping the focus on the man of the future. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we draw the curtain on our third Adeola Odutola lecture and presidential luncheon, I defer to the words of Rodan Bryan, an Australian television writer and film producer, who said that gratitude will shift you to a higher frequency and you will attract much better things. In that regard, I express the hope that all our stakeholders present here today will offer a willing hand when we again call you for support in the course of developing the implementation roadmap for the key recommendations emanating from the lectures. Hopefully, prosperity, prosperity will judge us positively when a review exercise of this memorable lecture is conducted. A competitive manufacturing sector is fundamental to our, bene to our beneficial participation in the African continental free trade area. I thank you all for honoring us with your esteemed presence and wish you all journey mercies to your various destinations. God bless you.
Thank you so much, DG. And on this note, we can safely call it a wrap. It's been a wonderful day, and I must commend you for your patience. Uh, the program is over, but it's still not over because our dignitaries will do a tour of the exhibition area before they leave. And after that, they proceed for their lunch, which has been set at the Chinese restaurant. The president would equally leave them. Our distinguished guests um, who are in front and, of course, the executive council members. But we need to do the tour of the exhibition so that they see uh, closely products made in Nigeria, which we are proud to showcase. And, uh, good number of our members are exhibiting at that floor. So um, also, for those who are not joining them for the tour, we would like you to please remain on your seats uh, because lunch is served, but we would serve lunch table by table. So if the ushers don't come to you, please remain until you are approached to have your food. There's enough food for everyone, but we want to make it less rowdy. And I'll plead with pressmen not to uh, stop our dignitaries, let them go for the tour of exhibition after which you can do your interview. Please, let's comply with all of this uh, instruction. On that note, I'd like us to please be on our feet as we take the national anthem. The national anthem, please. For the dignitaries as they go out for the tour of the exhibition area. We've taken on stage. We've taken please, uh, if you are not going on the tour of exhibition, please remain on your seats. Aside from food, we have souvenirs which has been donated by members, and we feel you should have uh, a pack as you go. Please. If you are not going on a tour of the exhibition, kindly remain on your seat. And if you are the owner of a vehicle with registration number SMK245 GTY, please kindly go and repack. You are obstructing somebody. Please let the dignities breathe. Don't suffocate them.